Hello and welcome to this tutorial which is going to focus on creating navigation graphics in Photoshop CS 5.1 and we're going to start off by building a very simple navigation bar. Uh, so if you open up the file simplenav.psd and we've just got uh, the beginnings of a header here which is going to contain our navigation bar. So what we need to do first of all is open up the ruler so that we can see and create some guides to work with. So if you press Ctrl and OR on a PC to turn on your rulers if they're not already on and then just make sure that the rulers are displaying in pixel form and then we're going to drag a guide down and across to the right of the logo on our screen and also one uh, along the top so we can measure the top left point of where our buttons are going to go. Then if you choose the rectangle shape tool from the toolbar and go up to your view options and make sure that the snap to guides option is selected. This will mean that when you create shapes they will snap to any guides that you've drawn on your, on your document. So draw a rectangle across the remaining width of the image and then this is a vector graphic inside Photoshop. Um, which means you can resize bigger or smaller and you won't lose any quality. So you can resize by choosing the direct selection arrow tool, which is above the shapes there, not the normal selection tool, direct selection, it's the white arrow. And click on your shape and then you can use the handles to resize it. You can also change the color by double clicking on the color on the layer to the left of the shape uh, in the layers panel. And you can deselect the shape by clicking on its icon on its layer, which also removes the outline from any vector shape that you draw. So next, just choose the Move or Selection tool and use the arrows then on your keyboard to reposition the rectangle we've drawn uh, to the perfect position where we want it. Next, we're going to add some type on top of our navigation bar which will represent the buttons that will take us to the different sections of our site. So choose the Type tool and click in the navigation bar. Type the word Home and then click on the check or the tick mark on the top right of the Properties panel. And then we're just going to repeat this process three more times for three more buttons in this example. So the second one we'll type the word Gear and click on the tick box. Then we'll use the type tool and type the word videos, click on the checkbox and finally the word photos and then click on the checkbox. So in your layers panel you should have four separate type layers, one for each of your buttons. So we're going to select all of these now and then click on the move tool or the selection arrow and in your properties panel at the top you will get some align and distribute shape options. So click on the first one, which is Align to Top, and then we're going to distribute the horizontal center of our text layers to space them out evenly. Next, if we go down to our Layers panel and add the shape layer, the rectangle we drew, to our layer selection by holding down the Shift key and clicking on it, and then click on the horizontal Distribute Horizontal Centers icon again all of our text will be aligned perfectly uh, in the center of our rectangle. Okay, we're going to add some pipe symbols to put lines in between the words now. So you'll usually find this above the backslash key on your keyboard if you hold down shift and backslash. Um, so we're going to select, uh, use the pipe symbol to type a line in between each of the words to separate them. And then once we've got three of those drawn, we can select all three pipes and recolor them at the same time by selecting the three layers and then choosing the color in the properties panel and changing it to an alternate color to make it stand out a bit from the words themselves. The next part we're going to create a simple button using uh, layer styles in Photoshop. So if you open up the button1.psd file and we're going to select the ellipse tool from the shape panel this time and then click on the shape layer icon to remove the outline after you've drawn a circular shape on your document window and then we can change the color of this circle in the properties panel again 
just click on the color and choose whatever color you would like. I'm going to choose a greenish color. And then click on the FX icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. And we're going to add a bevel and emboss layer effect to the layer style of this particular layer, the button. And we're going to adjust some of the settings inside bevel and emboss so we can get a live preview of what this is going to look like. So for example, we can change the depth, the size, we can soften the amount of bevel and emboss. Um, so that looks okay. And I'm going to add an inner shadow now to the layer style. And in the inner shadow, I'll reduce the opacity, change the size a little bit, uh, adjust the color. So there's lots of other layer effects that can also be added to any graphic that you create in Photoshop. And you can also add styles from the property panel when you're drawing a shape. So if you selected your drawing shape tool, uh, as soon as you do so, the shape uh, or the styles menu appears at the top in the properties panel and you can add any previously saved styles or any of the preset styles in Photoshop from here. Next, we're going to look at creating a nav bar by using smart object buttons. So if you open the file button2.psd and we're going to convert the button to a smart object by right clicking on the layer. Next, we're going to right click and duplicate the layer, uh, making sure that we're not copying it because we want to actually create a shape here. <clears throat> and we're still working with the circular shape from the previous example here. But <clears throat> we don't want to copy the layer, we want to duplicate it because if we make any changes later, then we can apply that to our duplicates without having to redo every uh, single button over again. So if you hold down the shift key and drag your duplicate, it's going to keep it in line with the original. You can drag it to the right. And then if you hold down the Alt and the Shift key at the same time, and you can drag out a third duplicate and a fourth duplicate then from uh, any of the existing ones. So we should now have four oval buttons. And we're going to use the Align and Distribute tools to evenly space these buttons. And then use the Type tool to type the word Home on top of the first button. Then type Gear, Videos and Photos on top of the other three buttons, respectively using the Type tool. And you can also just use the, uh, the Temporary Tool Switch option in Photoshop, which is if you're, if you're on the Type tool and you hold down the V key, then you can switch temporarily to the Selection tool and reposition your text. Okay, so if you want to change the buttons or the shape, um, then you can actually double click on the smart object in the layers panel. And then you can change any of the properties. So like if we wanted to change the color to purple, for example, we can do that just by clicking on the color. Uh, we could change any of the layer effects. We can also <clears throat> change the shape by choosing Edit Free Transform Path and then using the handles to change the size of our object. And when we're ready, we can just click the check mark to lock that in. And when we're finally finished, we've got to save and close this PSB file um, to make sure that the shape is saved and updated. And when we close the PSB file and go back to our main file, we can see that all of the buttons have been updated automatically. This uh, has happened because we duplicated the shape. If we had copied it, it would have created a new instance or a new version of that button, which wouldn't have updated. So duplicating shapes is a good way to uh, save yourself time and effort later on if you need to make any changes.